that there is, it's not likely that anyone here has already launched. Come on, people, nod your head. Raise yes, your hand. Launched. Who's launched? Nobody? Yeah, there are a few people that have launched. How are you doing, everyone? Hello. Good to see you all. 14 people in the room. I'll just wait another five more minutes, but as we're all here, we have, uh, what do we have, Ron? We have Ron's hand up. We have Carlos. Who's the, who's the, who's the Y9 prime? Is that Vicky? Yes, 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 yes. I'll change. I don't know why it does that every time. That's all right. I got you. I'll change you up. Okay. Uh, Gina, I saw you on the live oh. yesterday. Cool, cool, cool. Adrian Aga, Evie, is it Eve or Evie? I think you said your name differently to how I normally say it. Uh, I did. It's it's Evie, short Evie. vowel, short vowel, but it doesn't matter. I answer by both. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, Don't I stress. noticed on the live when he was going around asking about the t-shirt designs, which one you preferred. Um, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Mark. Quick question about t-shirts, right? Go ahead. Is it uh, not for you, Connor? Uh, uh, so, um, is it possible pink. to uh, any, in any way get the a laptop CEO image and order uh, the female size one? Uh, they haven't come out with like myself, the different like, designs or anything yet. It. I can just. Uh, oh no! It's just like I like the laptop CEO, but I just would like to have uh, a female style for myself, and I wouldn't sell it or distribute it to anywhere. But I just have an option to sneakily order something just purely for myself from my supplier. How could I yeah. get my hands on such files in a he way doesn't... that wouldn't violate the legal rights? He doesn't have a, a swag store, so it's not for I wouldn't ordering. Resell it. Yeah, it's not for a reordering or anything. Or any, it's like he doesn't he doesn't focus all his energy on swag stores. Oh, I have other a do. supplier who can do that for me. Like yeah. I uh, I can uh, order myself a sample, which is something that will not be linked to my store, anything like that. It just will go directly to me and only for me. She wants yeah. the vector. She's looking for the vector files. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think the team are going to release the, the design for that. I don't think they're going to release the design for that. It was very difficult for me to even get the design for that when I needed to do like the background that I needed whenever I'm doing the onboarding calls, if I'm switching between green screens and stuff. So um, I could always I could always ask, but I don't think they're going to release the design for that. Um, Just so I can use Printful to send me a sample only for myself, never link it to my store. Like uh, you made a print, uh, like you made yourself a background. Yeah, it still belongs to the Blake's Partner program. And oh, yeah, so yeah. Out, I know outside the, of that, they can't uh, control it. Copyright and license yeah. things. No, it's a great question though, but it, it, uh, even if I used it somewhere, it would have to go through Blake and he'll be the final decider. Um, he's very strict with all of that kind of stuff. When it comes to social media lead machine, Blake's part of program, people using his designs, his logos and everything like that. We're hot on that. We, we chase them up and make sure that they remove it if it's not been approved because um, we don't know what they're doing inside of their business or whatever else it is. Um, with what has been given out as T-shirts or whatever or this cap being one of two, um, has come from him and he doesn't have one. So he's very strict with regards to branding and logo and what it's being used for and how it's being used. Um, but when it comes to t-shirts that have been want allocated. to wear it at home and like um, um, this because I like female t-shirts and like, I like this one, but uh, then it's a little bit big for me. And I like girly stuff. Yeah, someone said on the previous live where she said, are you okay with me like creating I get a girly version of it. She says she's really good with stitching and everything like that. I was like, yeah. He said live on his calls. I think it was on episode four or five, maybe six. He said, yeah, go ahead. Do whatever you want to do with that T-shirt. So you've got free reign to, to rip it up and do whatever you choose to. Um, but it's uh, the one allocation. Um, if you become really good with this and he decides to interview, interview you and he says, Darren, he taps me on the shoulder and say, let's get, let's get Argo or somebody else on a, on a, interview where he would like to interview you he may he may throw some t-shirts your way so um i know that certain people have individual stories and he would like to highlight that um and so if you do really well with this use it as an incentive for yourself to earn it um i'm just seeing 
who else we've got in the room? We've got 16 people in the room. Okay, I'll probably go live now. Oh, I don't see uh, Marianne. Maybe she's having some power outages or something like that. Let me just go and check. Uh, don't see who. But, um, Evie, with regards to your question, um, after the six weeks of coaching calls, it's essentially 12 sessions. And if someone, after the onboarding call, once it's been started, the timer starts from there on. It's essentially 12 sessions, which is Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4 p.m. EST for the six weeks. If someone doesn't decide to appear for one of those for any reason, this timer is still started. We have our dates when the last call would be. And with the Facebook Messenger group, it's not really a support channel. It's more for when I needed to um, just announce when I'm going live or any information that I needed to disseminate to everybody all at once. But now we're just going to use emails and priority support going forward. So um, you're always like like Blake said that you're you are supported throughout the lifetime of however long you need it for, as he uh, mentioned live yesterday. Um, okay, I'm I'm assuming I'm not the only one on this boat because some of us may may or may not be launched in six sessions in do you know what i mean 12 uh in 12 sessions 12, yeah six weeks i don't know i i'm working as fast as i can but i'm not sweating the fact that i'm not that i may not be done when my sessions end because i, I want to get it right i don't want to have to go back and make a ton of corrections because i was sloppy or whatever oh, i've made loads of corrections since i've launched mine back in april yeah yeah. And I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just saying I don't want to miss something important because I'm rushing it. So I'm going through it diligently with the video, step by step. That's how I'm working it. And when I'm so done, I'm done. You're all good. Oh. You'll, you'll still get your replays and everything. And plus you, your calls with Blake for the next six months and stuff. So listen uh, yeah. to something funny. Listen to this. I just got a quote from someone on Fiverr. So, so I recorded the audio for my masterclass script, mm -hmm. right? And so I sent her the document of the script. She quoted me $750 to do a 2D animation. I'm like, are you crazy? I just paid $69 for um, Toonly. And I just don't want to deal with it, doing it myself. But for $750, bucks, i am doing it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people out there that have a software that pretty much they use. And then they can take the time to to figure that all out um that's an extortionate price that's ridiculous that's like a price for a program it's only 200 off from the blake's partner program original nine and seven yeah and she keeps um, and she kept saying well tell me what your budget is i go girlfriend my budget is not even you know a quarter to the price that you that you so let's just thank you for the quote have a great day <laughs> ask her what she actually does for a fiver <laughs> It's on Fiverr, right? Not that. I what she does but that's video. what she does. She's a she's a designer, like a, yeah. a video. Yeah, she does videos all day. She's on the wrong platform. Then she she needs to go to another platform if she wants to try, start charging like seven eight hundred thousand dollars. But they do it in a way that you, the initial thing is a Fiverr, like the basic thing, and then they add their packages and stuff on top, like get the resource file and all that kind of thing. But at least. I usually, at least I usually use Upwork. This is my this was my first time reaching out to anybody on Fiverr. Yeah, yeah. Fiverr is usually fairly good. I mean, especially when people are just starting out and they want to find something, but finding v VAs is far cheaper. If you find a VA who's just great at design, just wants an opportunity, a chance to work for somebody with a longevity plan of it, if they prove their point to you, you know, essentially you're their employer starting at someone with $3.00 is as low as I've seen. I think yeah, I was that, that was a, it's just crazy, but like, it it's is. a lot for them. It's not extortion or anything, but it's like a lot for them. And so when I was on a call yesterday, um, some people are saying like, even though it says three, I will still give, give the extra two on top of that per hour as a, as a thank you. So there'll be tons right. of stuff that they need to do, maybe 10 hours and that would be what, $30. And so what the extra two on top, but it's a thank you from their side and they understand that you, you they're a valued person. It's not just they're, they're an employee in a, set, in a sense or uh, contracted. Anyway, I can't see Marianne who's, uh, I haven't heard anything. So she must have a power outage or internet issues or anything like that. But anyway, we've got 15 people in the room. Um, let's go live here. So, 
Welcome to Black Spawner Program Accelerator call. This is call 52. I hope you're all well. How was the session yesterday with Blake? Did you all attend? Did you all go to it? Did anybody miss it? Yeah, yeah. You managed to get your questions answered and things like that? Yeah. I know Mark was in the room. I know plenty of other people are in the room as well. Awesome. Ronald, I see your background. What is that behind you? I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Oh, Ronald. Ronald. That's, uh, that's an old Doctor Who. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure what that was. Okay. Looks like, yeah. like some sort of reactor. Um, okay. We have Gina. I saw yeah. you live. Uh, Winnie, I saw you live. I saw plenty of people here live. Matt, did you, uh, Matt, Mary, were you able to attend live yesterday with Blake? Oh, he's, he's probably working away in the background. I know he's always working. I'm hard. here. I'm here. Hey. hey. <laughs> How are you I, doing? I, I, I'm good. Thanks, man. I, uh, I was not. Um, I did get an email, though, saying that uh, the replay is available and something about a, like a, like a speedier response on, on support, which sounds really great because I think today's my last day with you guys. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So we've changed a couple of things out here because I understand that one, I am working on my own business and I'm only here really for the calls and the messenger group was only just to announce things. Yeah. But with the priority support, if, if anybody sends a question inside of there, they're going to drop everything. Any of the questions that they have from the main Blake's partner program, they're going to, they already know the program inside and out. So they're there for you 24 hours. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of things that have changed and you might have noticed inside of your, your, your training area. Uh, let me just share my screen right now. So as you can see, we have a coaching call vault. Has anyone noticed that already? Yeah. So we've extract. Yes. So what we've done is we've created this portal. So if you haven't got this link, I'm going to drop it inside of the inside of the chat. Uh, let me just uh, reduce these windows here on my side. I've got so many cameras. Okay. So what we have here is the members portal. I'm taking everybody through this during the onboarding call. And so when you arrive, you most likely will have at least two or three of these open. You'll have the pro partner program on the top left-hand side. If you don't have the Done For You Plus and the Traffic Explosion, the Copy Secrets Masterclass, don't worry about that. I'm expecting you to at least have the partner program and the affiliate arena that is already here. Now, do not go ahead and try and like unlock them. It's going to cause shiny object. It's just to let you know that we've we've created this portal so that everything becomes you're going to go through this sequentially. So when you get through to launch, after launch, go ahead and open those up. The only one that I will say to open up now is the coaching call vault. So if you open that up at the bottom left hand side, everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. If you go ahead with this one, there's a form right here to unlock that. This is the same for the done for you plus the same for the, uh, for the, um, what have we got? Traffic Explosion Masterclass, as well as the Copy Secrets Masterclass as well. Those will appear inside of your portal when you unlock them. Do not open them unless you're ready for them. Only open them when. Don't try to go ahead because it's going to cause shiny object. Focus on your build. That's your income generating asset right there. Um, and so if I start receiving questions of what's happening inside of this program, this program, this program, your focus is, should be on the build. Um, I want to make sure that everyone's all focused on this and those who are ahead, amazing. You've got those in your, in your portal. Um, and also inside of here, we've sectioned them off. If Blake's last call here, number seven is there. Uh, so that's the replay for that one. And we've also dated these going forwards. The ones that I've been mentioning from on the onboarding call was starting from November onwards. All the timestamps have been removed as well, unfortunately. Um, I didn't move them over or anything, but anyway, just to let you know the numbers that I did mention previously, so it is recorded. If you ever have any spare time between waiting for your funnel, your designs or something or the blueprint or the, you've got Blake's calls to go through each and every one in your own time and mine, please note down these numbers, 29, 30, 31. Okay. 29, 30, 31. That starts in November. Thirty-five, forty-one, forty-five. So what? Okay. Those are just important calls. That yeah, that's where I just decided to just get really high on coffee and just lay down a ton of information and value so that you can go forwards. I think you've been around for a, a fair bit, Vicky. So uh, okay. Yeah. Can, so can you rattle those off again, Darren? So twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-five, forty-one, forty-five. 41, 
perfect. They used to be double starred. Um, mm. And Blake's changing out the members area so so it works out better for everybody else and with regards to like progress bars and things. So as you can see, like previously, I think yesterday and yesterday's call, Blake was mentioning about like the progress bars that are that were that had disappeared from here as well as inside of the accelerator. Um, he, we were talking about like whether to have the progress bars or not. The reason why I removed them was because inside of here, uh, let's just say, let's just go to launch and the first one. It was including all of our coaching calls of which I have 50, today's is 52. So it, I'm not expecting everybody to go through all 52 calls of which they're also minimum one hour up to three hours long. You don't need to go through any one of those. Come in into these calls with your your questions. I know it's 17 minutes past the hour right now. So I'm going to go for one hour at 18 minutes past the hour. But at least you see we have we have sectioned things off so it makes it more sense for you. And instead of like thinking and feeling and getting overwhelmed with how many steps that there are in place and not feeling like you've completed the members area, it's most, it was most likely because the coaching calls haven't all been viewed. By viewing, all I, all I mean is just by clicking on them. So you have a check mark next to it, adding videos. This one right here, if I just click on this one there, masterclass page video, the system will see and think that you've watched it now. So as you can see, there's a check mark there. If there's anything that you want to go and see again later on, just use the heart feature as a bookmark. Okay, can you see on the left-hand side? You can see that's now bookmarked on the left-hand side there. We cannot uncheck them for you. It's just the way that Kartra and ClickFunnels works. But at least you can see how that works now. Either way, um, hopefully that helps. Your priority support is right here. If you just click on this one, the desk is slightly different. So you got your priority support. It just takes you directly straight to there. So if you ask your questions, it looks very similar, but they will answer your question very quickly. Okay. Great. So um, outside of the coaching calls, definitely ask your questions there so that then it can be logged. Inside of Messenger, it can be, it, it will probably most likely be missing uh, the answers that you're looking for because it is more of a chat uh, more of a casual social place and Facebook messenger is never really a, a channel to handle those support questions or anything like that. So at least if I'm not there, you can go there too. And hopefully they'll be answering the questions within the hour or so it's man 24 hours anyway. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed Blake's call yesterday. The replay is there inside of the uh, coaching calls vaults number seven, and you've got access to your portal does everyone have a link to the portal yet? I'm just going to play. I'm just going to copy and paste it inside of the uh, Zoom chat. If you, everyone clicks on it and then makes it into a bookmark, and great, it's inside of the chat now. Darren, why isn't it just the same link every time? Like, why is the membership area link change? Uh, that's just the way the cartridge works. So, uh, if it was individual links, like for example, this one was a direct link for this one's a direct link for um, the accelerator program. You can you can totally bookmark these individually if you wanted to. We just wanted to make sure that it was all in one place. Yeah, that's good. I just keep bookmarking the one that has all of them. Mm. So that's the new link that I'll bookmark. Okay. Yeah, just that one. That's all. Um, I'm just thinking if there's anything else that you do need individually. If you wanted to bookmark the co coaching call vault as well, if you wanted to do that. Anyway, 20 minutes past the hour. I'm gonna go for an hour from now. I hope you're all well. 15 people in the room. We have. Let's see who's got their hands up. We have Ron, Carlos. Rosalind, Vicky. Okay, Ron, go ahead. It's your <clears throat> microphone. Okay, let me see. Am I okay? Um, yeah. First question. I'm going back over the affiliate, and I watched your um, tape video on it. But I got a quick question. When it comes to membership area banner, um, on the video that Blake uses, I can't get to that page. Uh, I'm just kind of lost. Okay, so you're just trying to add that banner into your members area? Yeah. Okay. So let me just share my screen. And I'll show you here. Okay, I'm going to go to clickfunnels.com. Hopefully this won't crash on me because it did the other day. And the affiliate arena. You can use that. You can use the portal if you choose to. That'll be better if I can if I were to do that. Right. I'm going to go into the affiliate leads machine on the left-hand side for funnels and the affiliate arena here. What what Ron is talking about is this members area banner. 
definitely, you know, on the onboarding calls, I did say, watch the, the welcome video. Um, the video that I had previously, that was 47 minutes has been removed. Uh, I still have it somewhere, but um, either way, all you need to do, if you want to invite somebody to this, it's on the onboarding calls, I'm telling everybody to go to watch that welcome video and then just do the bridge page. Of here, you have uh, the three minute and 23 second video where you import your first funnel and then be able to uh, invite people into the Blake's Partner Program. Now, this question is to do with the members area right here. Right. So it's taking the image. So imagine if I've downloaded it already, I'm going to go into my members area right here on the left hand side mm -hmm. after membership access. I'm going to click on open in editor when it appears on the top right hand side. And in the same way that he's imported the image into ClickFunnels from that video in the two minutes and 22 seconds, he's placed it right here underneath the menus. So it shows you a framework of where the lessons and all the section will be. And all I'm doing is essentially just clicking the element right here and adding the image, adding the image. Mm -hmm. And imagine if I've already done that, you add your affiliate link right here. I've used a bitly to track that of which I never check the tracking on that. But if you put in your, your invitation, your webinar link right there, that'll take them to that page. So if I was to, let's just imagine I was in my members area now, or if I go to it now, let me just see affiliate members, how that looks. Okay. Affiliate machine. Okay. So if I log in, once you've done what has been mentioned inside the affiliate arena, see on the left hand side, there'll be an image that will appear right here in a moment. There we go. Yeah. If I click through on that, that will be my affiliate link that oh, okay. I received from one register uh, right here. One register, you apply to be a Blake's Partner Program affiliate in earn while you learn. There's two, there's two links that you'll receive that you'll be uh, given permission to promote the pro program with. But this is the page that you'll see, or your customers will see, and they have the opportunity to watch this webinar. And when they click on this one, they can either go directly to it. Sometimes Blake changes this out and he doesn't have a form here, or you have to add your, de or they have to add their details and that's collected on Blake's side. So he'll keep changing and seeing what is causing friction for the end customer. And that's, that's the reason why we don't act, we don't need a lead capture page on this. We already know that our, they are our customers and they're inside of the members area, which is why I leave it to, for them to see it for themselves when they get inside of there, whether they buy the blueprint on its own or the blueprint and the 1000 followers or the blueprint, a blueprint, 1,000 followers in the masterclass or whatever uh, variation. And then they eventually progress through the masterclass and they see this big banner right here. Yeah. And when they see that, they'll upgrade because they've seen, the, they've seen and received the value. Most likely it's because of they've seen the masterclass, um, which is why I always touch base and make sure that they're going through that. But great question. So do you have any other questions regarding that? Does that make uh, sense now? No, and I just have one more quick question. As the bottom footer with help and member login and everything, where do I find, is it in module eight that I can um, activate all those? Sorry, say that again. Your members area. The, the bottom footer with yeah. help members log in and yep. all of that. Um, yep. Is that module eight? Uh, that will be wiring up your funnel, I believe. Someone can correct me if they want to. Uh, Modules are moving and changing. Uh, should be this one here, okay. where he talks about the footers and where to get your links and everything like that inside of the members area. Yeah, I think you're right. And I know that Blake shows on the video how to do it one time and then apply it all across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So that's exactly what Evie says. Um, he'll talk about how to connect everything up together, the footers. I think I'll have to remove that last video right there because you're not designing them, but you do need right. to know where to place them. But yeah, it's a long video of where I had my, uh, well, I was, I was taking these PSD files and I was taking the original designs. You don't need to do the designs. And so I'll probably end up like removing this part. 
we've forgotten to remove that out. Uh, but yeah, focus on the uh, this top one here, wiring your funnel, 17 minute, minute and 29 second video. Um, so you do it once on the footer and then you just replicate it out for the desktop. And then the same thing for mobile, they're two separate footers. So as long as you follow through the video there, take care. Take so care. Uh, once again, will you show that once again to get into it? I mean, what do I click on to go back? Uh, it's, it's number eight, add products. Or oh, add products, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then wire. it's wire up, wire up fun. Okay, great. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the okay. only questions I have. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, Ron. Uh, Carlos, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I have about five questions, and this is for the auto webinar. On that registration page, my question, and I think you already answered it. Also, my question was going to be, uh, where do we, where, where do they have that registration? You know, where they put their uh, email address and all that. I think you just showed us that's that one where Blake will change out and put it in it. And it's, uh, it's right between the, uh, the one before it would be the bridge page. Then you go to that sign up page, you know, basically email and it goes straight into that webinar training. Uh, so that's, that. it, dep it depends on the journey. So like if they're already inside of your members area, you've already got them as a lead. So you don't need to capture their information again. If you wanted to cause more friction, then you can, but it would be opt in and opt in. It makes no sense. Well, but if you if you had a bridge page, if someone just says, "Hey, uh, Carlos, like, what are you doing these days?" Here's the bridge page. They'll opt in. You catch the lead, and then the next page would be another opt in, mm. where they'd have to watch the webinar, and the opt in would be on Blake's side, not your side. So there's two. One, you need to capture the lead on your side, but also you could wrap um, an offer around that particular reason why to go through you, rather than everybody in this room can offer the same page, but if you've gone through something before that would be of value to them, whichever niche you've, you've gone through previously or what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. The reason why I ask is I have a list already of uh, 500 people. And so what okay. I was wanting to do is dump that list into SendGrid, which is another question. So when I dump that list into SendGrid, how do I do that? How do I, uh, you know, do I have to do it one by one or, you know, it's a batch uh, of emails there's usually there's i mean i don't cover the don't cover the uh same grid side of things as an autoresponder are you using that as a separate autoresponder because well, you said that you upgraded up it haven't you uh, upgraded what uh did, have you are you on a payment plan with uh SendGrid because you've got more emails that you need to email per day yeah uh, yeah that's what i oh yeah you remember from yesterday when i said that i signed up for that yeah. uh the one for the one to a hundred thousand yeah because uh i i well um and because I'm expecting a whole lot more emails to be coming in, you know, mm -hmm. on my other side, because I have a website that's collecting emails every day and it's starting to stack up a lot. But okay. with that, and that brings me to another question. I was under the impression that SendGrid was an autoresponder, uh, but is it an email address uh, where you send it out? or is It's it just the sender. So imagine the house is ClickFunnels. If you were to have all of your information, your messages, your, set, your text messages, the information, the message itself, house that click funnels and if you're going to be using a sender the sender would be the smtp provider that is this provider for you so it kind of just comes into your house and then takes all the all the mail and just sends it okay if you look at it that way yeah, yeah that without that brings another question that's one of my five questions now uh, as far as the uh the send grid i mean the uh what was that you said what, uh, sms um, smtp uh, no, no, the SMS. Uh, oh, the SMS, right. Yeah, and that would be through, uh, what, Twilio or something like that? The SMS? Uh, yeah, yeah, SMS uh, Twilio. Yeah, i got to find out more about it because I'm finding out that they have uh, the SMS Twilio and there's another one for, uh, I guess, uh, broadcasting or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, another question I have is when I, when I uh, send, uh, so back to square one, on my emails, the 500 emails that I have, um, I do have get response and that's they're already dumped in, from my we other website uh, into get response so I guess I, I just uh, somehow or another tie get response into um, which it already should be into click funnels and then send it that way um, it's under integrations when you know when you click on uh, the, yeah. The, yeah for that for that that's, that's how I set it up last time but uh, so uh, your so all of your emails are being collected by a separate autoresponder. It's not going through ClickFunnels. It's not being collected that way. No, no. It's under I got a website carlosjuliangoblin.com, and yeah. they're signing up for this uh, program that uh, I had a developer put it on it, and they're they're collecting emails too. So it's like half and half. But uh, on my half, it's being 
every day I'm getting like 20 or 30 or 10 or 50, something like that. It depends uh, in, into the autoresponder. Uh, and so doing it that way. Not and so how to how to really uh, get that message across? I mean, we don't we only train with inside of ClickFunnels, the automations and also the follow up funnels. Anything uh, that's outside mm -hmm. as a third party, we don't train on. So it would require whoever has that autoresponder, send lane, send grid, uh -huh. send grid, send, send lane is one of them. Yeah. Get response and all these other ones. A Weber, we don't train on. So right. however way you use them, how uh -huh. to disseminate those in the the email sequence and follow up from there would be up to you. But if you'd have to segment your list uh, as an overview and then create a tag for them and however way you use them, each and every platform will be different. So I couldn't go over that. Yeah. Oh yeah. But if you if you collected all of those emails and um, you you were to segment a particular part of that list mm -hmm. to send off an email to blast a I don't know how many you have, then I would send them to a lead capture page, an offer page where they could grab an offer from you first if they make a purchase or if they actually go through and watch that webinar. Uh, give them a reason to do so because anybody can just blast out a link. Mm -hmm. And if you have something that's of value to them, they would most likely opt in and go through to the next page yeah. forwards. Okay. Now, and let's see, I'm almost through with my questions, but one of them is uh, I'm trying to figure out what Blake did when I got his, because uh, I was telling Blake yesterday that I I thought it was just one email that I got and I looked at it and I clicked on it and I know when I clicked on it right away, I got excited about what I saw. So I went to try to find an email of how it was put together, you know, in text. And I found out that all through 20, 2020, uh, he had been uh, texting me or emailing me. So it's uh, like 20 or 30 that I saw so far. And I'm wondering, how did I get on his list? Or how did he... Uh, I, I have no idea. There was nothing I opted into. It, the only thing I could think of... Now, if he made a Facebook ad... Now, the, if you do, from what I understand about Facebook ads, you put an ad out there and you get it targeted to, you know, uh, the profile, you know. And so if, if I meet that criteria, the internet marketer and all this other stuff, you know, and, and all that, then they'll target market me and it'll be sent out there from his, uh, from his ad, you know. But now on my part, would I just get an email or would I had, had that uh, answer to that ad? I'm thinking it would just be an email. It could be an email, it could be an ad, it could be anything. Um, okay. You could have been on somebody else's list where, let's say, for example, like a Bob Proctor. Right now, uh, we're, we're essentially emailing his entire list. And however many times, I don't know. But I remember when we did it four times mm -hmm. to a part of his list, 700, 800, 900 people came into the room. I was like, oh, my God. So it could be from it could be from anything. Yeah. So it, it could have been from an ad. I don't know what your activity would have been yeah. and who you were assigned to as either whether they it Blake did a JV with Bob Proctor or uh, who was the other person learner who was who's been uh, Mark Mark Ward. We talked about that earlier. Who was his name? Something learner. Jeff Learner. Jeff Learner. Yeah. So um, they tend to do that. It's called like it's called solo ads. So yeah, and you're probably familiar with that, right? So. Um, whoever has presented something to to their audience, um, and whether it would be you attended live or you didn't, mm. or why didn't you turn up type of thing, that will be the follow up from from that from that email list, and that that can happen too. So it would most likely either be an ad or an email that you would have come across. It, yeah. So it seems like I don't know. At one point in time, like it seems like everybody's on everybody else's list. It's almost like saying that uh, all, read, all, all roads lead to the same road somewhere or another that connect. So in that point, it's like my question is, isn't that a way of like spamming in a certain way? Until, and you know, to me, uh, spamming would be you're, you're just shooting out emails. But where does a spam not become a spam? It has to have a birthplace somewhere. So let's say I have XYZ email and I send them out. Okay, so to me, at that point that I'm sending out, okay, that would be a spam because they didn't, uh, they didn't know anything about me. I didn't know anything about them. But there's opt-in. And should they choose to have the, you know, to opt-in and they want to find more information, to me, that become, that to me seems like, okay, that's where it changes the whole story between spam and not spam, you know? Yeah. So. so what it really comes so what it really comes about is whose list are you on? 
And so if you are, if you've still opted in to receive all these other emails afterwards, mm -hmm. you're still on, let's say Bob Proctor or Jeff Lerner's list yeah. and whoever he promotes, whether you come on the scene and say, I've got this next best thing, yeah. built this amazing relationship. And then you go live in front of them. Yeah. That's still Jeff or Bob Proctor's list. So you will eventually receive an email from Jeff Lerner or Bob Proctor of which you will have subconsciously most likely clicked on it mm -hmm. and won't know who was the referral well, affiliate or JV partner. The only other thing where it becomes spam is if say, for example, Carlos, you have this huge list and I say to, and you have, you haven't actually put in the contract or wherever inside of the small print somewhere that you're going to be using this list and selling it to somebody else. That's, that'll be illegal. You can't mm -hmm. just, you can't just sell it. You can't just sell the list over to somebody else just like that and just dump it. You can pr you can blast your list with a particular promotion or something or an offer or whatever it will be, whether it's a product, service, software, I don't know. You can ethically either promote something that you know of that is great and you believe in, and that will be up to the other person to click on or opt out. Yeah, I, anyway, every, everyone can opt out. But if you sell that list and just say, "Here you go, um, Aga. There you go. Just take my thousand-person list and just blast to that spam," because they entered into your list, not her list. But in a certain way, and I understand what you're saying. But isn't it in a certain way? And I'm not saying I disagree with what you're saying because I agree totally. But in a certain way, in that, in that, what solo ads are doing, they're selling their list to somebody else. You know, if I buy a two thousand dollar list from X Y Z, then he's selling his list to me, basically. They're not. They're selling the ability Party. to promote in that list for X number of clicks or something like that. Oh, okay. So, for example, you have a ten thousand person list of which you're only going to monitor and track X number of clicks or X number of emails that go out or something like that. Now it's in permission of him buying through to you to have the permission to go to a targeted list. And then no more emails will go out. They're not. They're not giving you a portion. Here you go. Here's all the emails. That is spam. Okay. There's another thing that is some like link. What do they call it? Uh, email sharing. Where uh, I don't know. I forgot the name of the terminology. Where let's say you have 500 people on your list. I have five people. People on my list. So we swap. It's called ad swaps or or list swaps or something like that. Yeah, and, it can be some sort of exchange of that. It doesn't have to be for money. Money oh, whatsoever. Okay. You know. Say, for example, I go into a group. Mm -hmm. That's not an email list, but it's a group. But I'm standing in front of somebody else's group and just going live, even if it's like 100, 200, 300 people. And it's their group. It's their, they've nurtured those people to, to bring them into the room and bring some value to them. And then suddenly you've been raving about them over the last week or something. And then suddenly this thing launches. Uh, imagine this. Blake did this. He, um, he said, okay, well, I'll change out your profile images. I'll change out. I'll change. I'll change out your featured image, as long as one, you do it at this time, this date, for this many this many days. Here's what to say, what to do, what to promote to. It's essentially the same thing. He's leveraging, or somebody out there could be leveraging somebody else's personal profile, but it's their contact list. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I it's think... their choice to make that blast or that change of which someone else can click on it, whether it's an email, whether it's on a Facebook, but in terms of spam and email, one of the same. It's the person's choice whether they wanted to send out that email or that information out there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I understand now because even with that list swapping, they had to have opted in somewhere or another uh, at one point in time, so... Yeah. Okay. At some point, you all might be doing some JVs together and whether you have some value in crypto or something else, I don't know what things that you might want to be promoting further down the line or your own programs. And you created a synergy within this room of 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, you could always you could always continue the, the conversation and journey going forwards from there. And you never know who you're meeting in the room. Sometimes, just like I did this time last year, I went to Fun Hiking Live. I didn't know I was buying into not only just the program, the social media lead machine, going into the Blake's partner program, going to Fun Hiking Live, shaking Blake by the hand and saying like two words to him. And now I'm a year on from the 16th of January when it came in in 2020 to now be presenting to you because I've gone through the program and changed and made the iterations and whatever I think and feel is not right as well as the team uh, will make those changes from the top going down. But it's all 
in, in regards to all the spam and everything that you may consider a spam, it's the definition of around of just take it or my choice, I'll send out the message, I'll send out the email, I'll send out the, that particular broadcast. And that's where it comes down to uh -huh. just that. It's a very fine line right there, which can cause you a lot of implications and uh, less safe. Uh, uh, people can be fined for it quite a lot. I think Argo was saying something live yesterday in Ireland. You were saying something about oh, spam? So, uh, yeah, you can be fined quite a lot per each unsolicited uh, marketing message uh, on any channel, text or email. And then it can be even a few thousand euro per one. And then it very much depends on the judge. So if somebody uh, makes a complaint, to a data protection commissioner, well, you, whoopsie day, easy. And then it depends how good your lawyer is, what sort of a judge there is. So uh, even if uh, the rules might be different uh, when it comes to the height of fines in different countries, I would really look into um, data protection basic laws, which is uh, certain things are very easy to find or ask a professional is the best option. For the goodness me, uh, especially with GDPR and everything like that, uh, it can be way more expensive than generate your sales. Uh, and it might, again, depend on the country, but I would be very careful. Uh, I also got a certificate uh, from that, from like one of the legal societies of Ireland. So it's not like woo 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 information from the net. And I think after GDPR, it wouldn't get lighter. Let's put it this way. But I'm not a lawyer, but be careful. And mm. in any doubt, look for reliable sources of information. Mm. Absolutely. Every every country and jurisdiction is different. Like Australia right now, in the last, what, six hours, um, the government and Facebook are kind of coming face to face with whatever issues are going on over there. I don't know who's in Australia right now, but the uh, news that are not being, that are not appearing inside of Facebook for them and the ability of Facebook saying, well, you have to pay for our platform to put news on there. Facebook isn't the place to actually just lay down the news in the way that you're doing it. Um, and so they, yeah, they're, they're just not in agreement right now. So they they may ban Facebook altogether at some point. We don't know what will happen, but we'll see. Um, but definitely um, tread lightly with that and just know know your stuff with regards to it. Uh, I think it was, uh, I, saw, I saw your comment, I did. I was monitoring all the chat yesterday. Um, but yeah, the the, 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 law, the law or the act that you're looking for is add, I can spam. Uh, definitely have a read of that. It's quite a lengthy document, but um, it's something to, to be wise about because you're in this business and you are sending out emails. You, are, have a, you do have a follow-up sequence, so you might as well be well aware of what's going on with your surroundings. And each and every country has their own dis uh, different jurisdiction and legislation with that. But either way, um, great question though. And um, even if you register as a limited liability company, uh, there's one thing, even if you think in different countries the principles are the same, the details, the details are important. For example, in Ireland, uh, the corporate fail protection can be lifted from you only in few cases, while in states, once uh, somebody really wants to go after you, uh, it's easier to lift the corporate veil by proving uh, you are the corporation and the corporation is you. So, um, well, uh, what is sometimes done is, for example, forensic accounting and, uh, well, whoops, days if they prove you are the corporation and the corporation is you, somebody wins the case with you, well, uh, they can put a lien uh, on uh, anything that belongs to you. That's why uh, when it comes to certain things like that, uh, don't be stupid about uh, breaching the data protection laws uh, and uh, even high, uh, always ask somebody who is a lawyer because again, there's a difference even between states, uh, in US states, states in Europe and etc. So some things that might seem like, oh, deadly, I can use that. Whoops, maybe not because there uh, is just an opportunity to come up with other ways. And even if you read that emails by great people who you subscribe to, you can see the way they're doing this. So just keep that yeah. in mind. I'm not a lawyer. It's not a legal advice, but just you see the details, right? And the details that uh, you probably will not find out uh, unless you study this, know somebody who gives you great advice. 
there are a lot of opportunities to do that right anyway. Yeah, exactly. So um, with regards to with the time wise as well, I just want to make sure I'm answering as many people's questions as possible because we're talking about span quite a bit on this particular motion. Uh, we want to get through as, as many as we can. So appreciate each and every one of you bringing in the questions, but we don't want to be hot. Don't want to be on the one topic for too long or anything like that. So Rosalind, Vicky, you are next on the microphone. Oh, you're muted. Yeah. So um, this is actually just a follow-up to my question that I had with Darren yesterday about my domain. Okay. Um, I did go ahead and submit a service ticket and she came back and asked for me to give them privilege or access so they could look at my ClickFunnels account. But okay. I figured since we were on the call today, maybe that would be something you could troubleshoot. Yeah, sure. Let's do it now. Let's do it. Everybody else can see what's actually going on because it's really good that um, you we all get to see this as well because this might happen for your end customer and they're trying to do this inside of their masterclass. So if you want to share your screen with me, uh, we can all go through this together and then I'll, I'll, I'll get through this really quickly. Where did you purchase your domain from? Um, I did GoDaddy. Okay, cool. Even better. GoDaddy is really easy and simple to, to use. And then I'm going to take over screen control as well. Okay. Uh, if you can get up the right screens, like GoDaddy, and if you can, uh, we've got ClickFunnels, cool, excellent. If you just accept on your side, cool. I have screen control. So what you can do is, this may or may not be inside of the training. I don't think it is. But when I used to work behind the scenes of ClickFunnels Expert Support, uh, this domain right here, let me just take that bit there, right? So I'm going to go to a place called uh, whatsmydns.net. Net. Yep. I'm going to throw this in here with www. So you can see on the top left hand side, I can actually place this in here. And without even going into GoDaddy, I want to see if this is being pointed over to ClickFunnels correctly. If it says target.clickfunnels.com, it's not. So the problem is, is, is with inside of GoDaddy. If you could uh, go into GoDaddy, do you have a Oops. website that's connected to this? Is that why? Or did you have a, have a hosting with GoDaddy previously? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, hopefully, if you can sign in and everything, it shouldn't, sh it shouldn't show your password or anything. But if you want to just sign in there for me, please. And then we're going to your DNS settings for that domain. There are a couple of things that, I mean, Blake mentioned about like the spelling mistakes and stuff like that. It goes, you can do... It, can go into more detail with that. With, with regards to your domain name, it needs to be pointed in uh, correctly with your C name, but it's also at least 48 hours to propagate that change. Um, when you go through to it, I'll show you. And also your forwarding rules need to be put in place as well. I believe that's inside of the training, but we'll take care of that now. Um, yeah, I checked the spelling. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's I a spelling. I did something pretty simple, so I, I didn't. Think it yeah. Was Hold on, let me find out. What I was thinking, what I was thinking here. live is that um, the domain could have been added to ClickFunnels too early, but it doesn't seem like it's been added too early. It just hasn't been pointed over correctly to target.clickfunnels.com. Um, if you want to, what I'll do is I'm going to stop sharing the screen. If you could actually log in. in the meantime, I'm going to deal with any other questions that I have. If you could log into GoDaddy in the meantime, let me know when you're ready. Um, Vicky, we'll, let's go with your question. Okay, I have a few questions too, but actually in regards to Rosalind's situation, I am curious, are we going to be in the done for you? Are we verifying? The domains or a subdomain is that something that we're doing or would they get their domain verified and then we would just connect it to quick funnels so essentially if we were to look at the journey of going through the master class have you gone through your master class yet mm -hmm. yeah so inside of the master class it, it talks about like getting your domain and connecting yeah. it up and all that kind of thing so imagine that whole journey you were doing it for them right. they're just so getting we, the account mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. we get a sub user access to that. We can okay. do a video or if you do a video or if you take over screen control like this, add yourself as a sub user. I think I went over on the one last couple of calls about sub users. Do you remember that one? No. Okay. Let me just uh, screen share on my side, just to uh, show you how to do that. What you'll do is uh, just to get some information on that, you go to help.clickfunnels.com and go to sub user. You want to get full rights. Uh, sometimes you can do a minor user, but you want to get sub user. What you need to do is I'll show you the information of what you need here and on how to add that in the back end. So well, this is to be a sub user for ClickFunnels. Would we also need to be a sub user for their domain registrar if they're um, using GoDaddy so that we can do the C name in the 
With that, I, when I've dealt with customers and clients previously, uh, they've just given me their username and password. But if there's an ability to have delegate access, which I believe that there, are, there are, is the ability to do so inside of um, GoDaddy, they can give you delegate access. Um, again, that could be another Google search as well. So have a look at um, GoDaddy delegate access or GoDaddy sub account, sub user. Um, here's, here's the one right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this and put it into the chat so you can click on it and bookmark it or do whatever you need to do. And I'm logged in, Darren. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay, and then this is what you need to do inside of ClickFunnels. On the top right-hand side, uh, over here, on the top right-hand side, let me move the cameras because it's going to be recorded over there. Uh, you need to go to account settings. And this can take about five to 10 minutes to come across to... So they're invite, imagine this is a end client and you're doing this over a screen share. Uh, you could do this with them. So it takes away a bit of the friction and the time, or you could pass on that video, which I wouldn't suggest. I'll just grab screen control, invite the sub user and Vicky, you'll be adding in your email address here. You won't be clicking this one. You'll be given full permission, send the invite and an email will be sent to you. When you receive that email, you'll just click on that yellow button and it will just be an easy follow through with that. And what you'll do going forwards is you'll log into your own account and you'll have sub user accounts on the right hand side. So let's just go and have a look at, um, let's go and have a look at Teresa. Rosalind. So this is what, so I'm now inside of her account. Okay. So you can see that I can go into any of the click funnels and same thing. I'll have access to her account settings and domains and all that kind of thing to add the domain. But with regards to the, your, um, your GoDaddy account, they may give you the full access. They might give you the, the name and email with this particular client. She was saying, yeah, just take everything, get my Google account and everything. Just YouTube, take everything. I said, okay, that's, and I just, I just logged it inside of Trello. So I could just go to that one place all the time. Um, and I didn't have to, and I, I could save it as well. And then once I finish with the project, I just delete all the, all the username and passwords from inside of Chrome. But um, yeah, you could do that. So hopefully that helps. Do you um, use Trello to help manage your, your different customers? Yeah, I did. Um, I did a couple of builds. So as I was doing a build, I was creating a, a Trello. So this page was done. This page was done and I'd move the task, the page along. So like this one, and then whatever tasks there were above. Um, first time round, it can be a little bit like tedious, but like once you get into the flow of it all, you could start, you could create your own, your own flow. And so you won't miss anything going forwards. You won't miss that, oh, I've missed the, the link on the footer. You'll have a flow of what you'll do in each and every page. So it will, it will, be, it will be so seamless. And instead of taking like days and weeks, it'll be like hours. Mm -hmm really easy like i mean it's a two-page build anyway but if you do something more um yeah do you have any other questions with the sub user access and emails uh the domains and all that kind of thing i have more questions but not about that yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead i will okay. we'll get back to Rosalind in a minute okay what's the seinfeld list for i remember blake he didn't really go over like what is that like what's the point of creating that list so like um like collis is doing he has like a he's just collecting so okay, he just can to blast. have that list yeah okay yeah like if they buy, or if they don't buy, they're still going to get into a Seinfeld list anyway. So then that, so then why, what's the purpose of calling it a Seinfeld list? Why wouldn't it oh, just continue being the blueprint it's, of Anthony Park? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Russell's way of saying, you know, like the series Seinfeld. Huh? So there was always going to be something, a new message, a different delivery each and every time. That's why he's called it a Seinfeld list. It could just be an email series or just uh, your, I, I could just call it a part of my leads, a part of people who have opted in. So that's all it is. And yeah, so I, the Seinfeld is a sequence. But okay. So, but the, when you have like all your different lists, you have user or you have buyers, mm. you have a buyer's list, and then you have a Seinfeld list. Like what's the, I'm like, if you're going through the emails one to seven, and then you mm -hmm. have moved to Seinfeld list, why yeah. is that list any different than just your regular buyer's list? That you so have? you know who are your cold or your warm, warm, audience and then your buyers are your hot uh, buyers so and Seinfeld is just everyone yeah who have either, either purchased or or, yeah so okay. it's like if they've purchased everything amazing they're gonna they're gonna be staying in my buyers list so at least I can segregate that way you're you're in the 297 plan aren't you you're in uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's good 
Yeah. And that's one of the benefits of actually having ClickFunnels um, at the 297 plan because you can actually have lists. Whereas right. in the $97 plan, you can totally do this in the $97 plan. But when you need it for your business and when you want to segregate your list going forward, you can do that. Or you could do like Carlos is doing and have a third party autoresponder. Go right. On. Okay. And that, that does lead into another question I have. So I'm actually going to go through the masterclass and set up my only magnet for copywriting. And so then I can do, how do, I guess I'll just find it out in ClickFunnels, but I would create a follow-up funnel with emails one to five specific for that list. Um, if we're setting up this program for our, for our customers and they are going to have a list of five emails, do we, we're going to import that follow-up funnel and then we're just going to fill in the blanks for them. Your you're going to collect the information from them using the form. And so you're going to fill out the blanks for them. Yeah. You're essentially going yeah. through the masterclass for them. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So I'll just figure out through ClickFunnels how to create my own follow-up funnel um, for my own purposes. Um, and then once, because my ClickFunnels account is already set up with SendGrid, I never have to do that again, right? I can create as many follow-up oh. funnels as I want on ClickFunnels and it's always going to get sent through SendGrid. Yeah. And unless you're Carlos who is uh, sending out 1 million people. No. <laughs> So, um, okay. Yeah, and then on the two step order, on the two step order form, how do I put back the phone number? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, just like a, it's just a toggle. Um, yeah, that, that stumped me for a while. Um, so let's go back into my account. Let me just go back to maybe one page and let me go. Let's just do this instead. Go to funnels. Let's close the affiliate arena. Let's close this one. That's not even my account anymore. Let's go to my, my account. Okay. All right, all right. So I'm gonna to go to page, uh, edit page on the two-step order form. And once I'm in there, I'm gonna to go to the right-hand side and go to the two-step order form and click on the settings or just the element does one of the same. Okay right here mm -hmm. and so if I was to just minimize the screen just a little bit so you can see the phone number pop in and pop out that's too small okay can you see on that so this is the first step um you're probably looking at the advanced feature toggle phone number hide phone number field hide and show it that's all it is where where does it say hi okay what wait your phone is blocking let me just is it? You. okay Okay, show phone number. What are you in right now? Advanced. Yeah, advanced. Okay, advanced yeah. show phone number. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, and the reason why we're talking about that is because um, this has all been tested and whatever Blake has done on his, I'm going to emulate essentially on mine. Um, and the reason why he's spoken in the psychological side of things and the eye and the, how the eye moves with the attention here goes to brand new to the underline to the moving bar to the moving um, arrows here, the pulsating uh, click to unmute the big play button and the moving video, it's drawing the eye to the bottom right hand side. You've also got this, this is pointing down mm -hmm. to the form that they need to fill in. Also, this is pointing to this one section. And if you remove yeah. that phone number, mm -hmm. you can do that, which is absolutely fine. And I'm just going to show everybody else like how, to, if they don't want to put the phone number in, that's absolutely fine. Now that is out of place. It's all good. I can just click on, go to this particular element here and just pull down that margin. Let's go. Yeah, I, I played around with that though. It didn't look good. Didn't look good. Yeah, it's too far down, isn't it now? Yeah. So um, yeah. just put it back. Well, I just don't save. Anyway, so Yeah, I'm not going to save that. But anyway, at least everybody sees what we're what we're working with there. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, one more question. What now? I'm just starting to think of when I when I set up the the page to collect the emails from people watching the affiliate um, watching the webinar. Do you do anything with those emails? With the emails afterwards? Yeah, I don't. The, so what's the point of collecting the email? Just to have? Just in my business model, I. So I <laughs> The email is a, com is a communication point for them to continue communicating with, but because I'm already speaking to my customers and clients each and every week inside of a group, inside of a messen messenger group, and I give them a Zoom call, give them a calendar link, they meet with me every week. So I see okay. them anyway. So anyone who watches that webinar and enters their name and email, does that get stored somewhere? 
that's Blake's side. So that's a collected lead on his side, which is why it's important for us. If you're inviting someone brand new, who's never even come to your program, never purchased your blueprint, yeah, you haven't collected that lead. So if you've got that bridge page, that's where you can do that. Yeah, that's what I have. So I have the bridge page. So name and email. Does that information go somewhere? Your name and email, yes, it does go somewhere. It goes inside of either your list or it goes inside of your funnel. I think you'd probably be best off because of the way it's structured for you to create a new list yeah, and then do it tight in that way. Because I think you're, the it just gets collected inside as a contact in the funnel. Okay. So, change, so you've got the training to know how to do the list, how okay. to collect the email and uh, um, should be able to go right. forward with that. And have an, a list called like affiliate viewers, people who just viewed the video or something like that. Great question though. Really good question. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thanks. That's it. All right. All right. Rosalind, we're going to take care of your screen now. Let's have a look. What's uh, what's uh, going on on your side? Okay. Uh, do we need? Can do we... I need to share my screen again? Yes, please. Yeah, and I'll take over screen control, and we'll just get your your domain added in. It shouldn't even take as long. How long have you been waiting for this? To um, a little over a week. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to take over screen control. Yeah, it's too long for you to be waiting for a week. Okay, so after Rosalind, we have Evie, and I think that's all the questions we have for today, uh, unless I, I've missed something in the chat. Uh, this one here? Yes. Okay, manage DNS. Okay, let's see. It looks like there was a website that was not published there. You just... You're just paying for the domain name here or are you paying for like a whole package or something with GoDaddy? Just the domain. So this right here is saying that we, the domain registrar, own the domain. So we're going to host it here. That's why it's saying that instead of here. Remember when I did that? Uh, right. That's essentially saying that we own it. We're going to keep it here. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this out inside of the training. If you've added your oh, domain, I went through that. Yeah, to to point to, I did all that, yeah. and I saved it. <laughs> but I on. mean, I know it's not there, so but I did yeah. follow that part in the training. Yeah, that's all it is. Um, I'm just going to make sure everything else is all correct. Uh, the name servers underneath here are the default name servers for GoDaddy. They're all good here. That looks fine to, using the default name servers. Uh, this looks correct here. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that it is all correct. 301 and forwarding only. Yeah, there's nothing for me to change here. I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing at the end. There's nothing at the start. And that's it. I don't need to change anything here. There's nothing for the subdomain. You're all good. Now, okay. if I, if I um, just refresh on this page, but at the same time, go back to, the, to this one here. Now, I don't think this is inside of the training, but this is really good for everyone to note down. What's my DNS.net? If you ever want to pull this up.
inside of there you can go and have a look at how to split test that. So you can have one variation and another variation and just change one thing, whether it's a title or a video or something. One thing that you want to change it out and see which one, which one everyone's landing on and are they clicking through on that one or adding the information because of what you said here in your messaging or because of the testimonial video and then just develop from there. Okay, so people do like the testimonial video or they do like what Ruslan's saying. Add the testimonial videos afterwards once you've got a ton of, a ton of other, other people. Now, I'm selling, the, I'm selling the lead machine without people seeing my funnel. And with Paul Sidhu, who's not with, with us anymore, he's finished with his six weeks of coaching calls. He used to just say, just grab the free products. If you don't like it, let me know. And they hadn't even seen the funnel. So they just said, okay, well, we did. And he got three people to buy. So it's not the funnel in some cases that's going to help you sell. It's who you contact, how you build the know, like, and trust. And if they, if you know what you're talking about, which you will by the end of this, um, I'm, I'm just essentially just a year ahead of you, you all, of which my funnel was launched like four or five months afterwards. And then I started to progress and start talking to people. And then I started to answer questions inside of the group. And now I'm answering everybody else's questions here. The problem I see a lot of people stumbling on is when they want to launch and they don't launch or they finish the funnel and they don't launch and or they think that it's the video that's going to hold them back. It's not. So don't worry about it. I would, I wouldn't just done it again. There we are. Um, I would definitely split test that have one version of the uh, two-step order form and another one have you uh, on there just doing your message and go for and just speak for about like five minutes max and then you'll have the other one with just a testimonial video and see if one were, wins over the other All okay we, i think you'll be fine like I, I was saying a couple of weeks back i'll i'll definitely change out my funnel and buy a domain that says apple pear pineapple.com and i'll still yeah. sell it it doesn't matter like who, who knew what apple was going to be today a t a watch ipad yeah iPod. I, I just think to another degree we may be a little bit more hypersensitive to making sure that you know what i'm targeting is actually they see themselves in the mm. in what i'm targeting as well but yeah. um you know i'll take the suggestion of the two split and you know kind of move from there yeah yeah it's a sensitive subject and it's i think when you stand there as the authority figure as well when they see you standing in front of them leading the way and you've got the arrows in your back and you're the one that's saying that you really <laughs> should you know it's what it's just you it's not going to be like several other people and as you as you build this testimony like just imagine if you had this testimonial video i would invite you to do a testimonial video of going through your own lead machine going through your own members area and building out as if it was for your own separate side business or a page that you're going to be doing or a group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you'll know the journey of what the master, uh, the, the lead machine does and how it can be effective for you so that you could genuinely use that as a testimonial video. Yeah. Well, that's my intention because I'm yeah. also launching my personal coaching business. So perfect. That's, that's the uh, whole idea. How many people are you, I mean, are, I'm guessing you're in certain groups as well. And this is a great subject. I'm guessing you're in, already in certain groups and you're already congregating with uh, certain people who are also doing the same thing. Want to help, uh, help out as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, how many people, do you, do you meet up with people each and every week? Do I do what? Do you, do you meet up on a Zoom call or anything like that each and every week and talk about what's happened or whatever it is? Mm -mm. Okay. Not yet, no. Not yet, but certainly will do soon. Um, but eventually, when you bring those people through and they start, and you and you start mentioning about this lead machine and how it can help them, um, you can invite them and show them it and walk them through what you've built and why you've built it, and then the, and then when they go through and build it out for themselves and make that purchase as well, yeah, they've already built a know, like, and trust with you, and so how you've changed out your profile, they might want to have that done too. Um, I've seen other people go into certain groups and just say, Hey, do you want your, would you like me to just do your graphics for you? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a value add. Like, yeah, sure. That'd be amazing. And then you just do the graphics for them. Something simple to the point. It shouldn't take too long. And um, they'll be asking you certain questions from that. It can cause conversations. Um, no worries. Evie. Uh, no, trying, trying. Sorry. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully there's a ton of ideas that you've, yeah, that's that you've got from that. All right. Thank you. No worries. We just want to make sure that all the testimonials are, are genuine and uh, everyone um, make sure, make sure that they're, not, they're definitely not using like uh, fake testimonials. Um, but yeah, great questions. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? We've got every, uh, Rosalind, all your questions answered, right? Yes. Thank okay. you. No worries. Uh, Evie, go ahead. Okay. So I am um, looking at the same situation as Rosalyn uh, with the fact that I added my domain. It's probably been 10 days. Uh, oh, okay. And it's just saying unverified. And, and it did say when I added it that it's going to take up to, I think it says like 48 hours or something. Added. Yeah. But it still says unverified. Let's go and have a look. Yours might be able. Uh, where did you buy your domain from? Uh, it's a Google domain. Oh, I haven't dealt with the Google domains, but it's probably most likely to do with, um, if you do that, um, the same what I did previously with the, um, what's my DNS.net, pasting in or, uh, let's see if we can do it. Okay, see if I can take this challenge on. All right, let me take up a screen share. Screen sure. share. Um, does anybody else have any other questions in the meantime? Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, let me just, uh, well, I think both of us are controlling the screen at the same time. Um, okay, oh, it looks like you already had the screens open. Um, a, you know, change that to C name. I didn't mention that as well. Let's check that out. Looks like you've already paid. Is that the correct username? Uh, what do we have here? Is that missing a W? Oh, yes, so. it is. <laughs> I, I hadn't run it. But. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's hosted in the wrong place. So it needs to be pointed over to, you need to create a C name and change the www on that. Do you have that page open already? Yeah, it's right on top here. Let me, let me click it for you. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you. It's right there. Um, give it a second. Uh, and we're going into DNS, right? Yeah. By the way, I'm not familiar with this platform. So let's go ahead. Just go ahead. Take a look and see if you see, if, if you see anything that can help. Are you using this for anything or you just purchased this domain from... I just, I purchased it, but I also use their email, which is probably what I, the email that I'm going to integrate because they have the autoresponder feature. Okay. So I see, uh, what do we have? Uh, 301 synthetic. These are, these are so technical Google. Wow. I know it's, it's really technical. So I did add click funnels. You saw that below, right? Under the synthetic record. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, HTTP. Yeah subdomain forward no is that wrong yeah no we're not doing a subdomain but it's uh, it's good to see that how you know there's so many different platforms even like um autoresponders as well and let's have a look what we got here so you're you're adding a ttl i think it's here at target.clickfunnels.com it's not quite clear for me to see and it's a c record c name one hour domain name. Um, just want to copy and paste it? Yeah, please, yeah. Okay, let me just get it, grab it here. Because we don't normally have to add a domain name, but I, I don't oh, know. Do I need to it. add the www or it's? Um, we'll try it. We'll try it with and without. You go. Okay. And we can delete the other subdomain that's above. Okay, so. We'll see. Okay. Well, it says 48 hours. So yeah, it can't be worse than it is now. You might've fixed it. So I guess we'll, I'll just check back in. Yeah. I'm just going to remove that subdomain there. Just, it could be, could, could be conflicting. And uh, well, we've got subdomain forward. We don't need that Google dynamic DNS. I'm not sure about any of these because I haven't seen them before, but essentially this is what we're looking for. Uh, you might want to come back over here and remove change. that. Yeah. You can either, you can probably like uh, do it again. I can and, edit. I can edit. Let me just go in now and just remove it because it, it already knows it's WW, I'm, I'm assuming. And then I know I'm going to have a problem with my email integration too because it's so technical. Yeah. But this this stuff has probably been already been answered inside of YouTube. Somebody else has probably purchased a domain from Google. So you could actually type in um, domain name, click funnels, Google, something like that. Google domains. Yeah, there's a, there's a video in click funnels. Yeah. So I'll worry about that when I get to that, but thank you. Appreciate it. 
yeah no worries i can even have a look at it as well afterwards as well but no worries um but hopefully that'll get pointed over corrected and correct correctly and then you can check out your dns what's my dns on there okay great yeah Thank you. just monitor that yeah no worries um who we have aga go ahead oh yeah. and the camera fell okay so quick question you remember the legal pages uh, some people were buying the text uh, you also said uh, that we can copy uh, from blake but obviously change addresses names and etc is this still accurate as long as you don't have you know, the blake's text. blake's um uh, company name and everything like that you really should be having your own and reading through it and making sure you're well versed, not just the copy and paste. Because... Oh yeah, I, I pressed all Control F and like went zzz, 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 <laughs> one by one. Can I yeah. interrupt real quick for a recommendation? ClickFunnels has all of the legal documents in there, and you type in your company name, and it'll it'll generate. It's a generator. It'll generate policies for you, terms and conditions, and even a refund policy is in there. Uh, I'll try oh. to get the. Yeah, let me try to get the link up there for you in uh, business tools, right? You're talking about the uh, clickfunnels.com uh, forward slash business dash tools. It should okay, be this one. Me... Yeah, the generator, the generator is great because you put your company info in there. Can you find it faster? I got like uh, a zillion windows so, open here. So inside of here, you've got all of these things. Yeah, so this is this was go. released about like two or three months ago. It's a great point. I haven't actually used it. I haven't played around with it or anything. It's but fantastic. Like, Try it. Open one it up, like the privacy. Open up the privacy one. Uh, where is that? I'm not familiar up with it. Up there. Or oh, even there the is. refund. Even the refund, because we have refunds, right? Yeah. Uh, refund policy generator. There you go. So there you go. Put See, in all the details like that. You just fill that out. And then send me my refund and it pops it up with all of your inf company information in it. You copy and paste it into your into the legal area of your funnel. Awesome. Well, there you go. Um, some people that say that they've gone to a particular company and they get a refund policy, it doesn't quite fit. It's like two lines. Um, so that um, may or may not great. fit. You'll see it. It's fantastic. Yeah, because it hasn't asked us the question of what products do we have. So it won't fit for the exact products. So some of them may have a refund policy. Some of them may not, for example, but as a base baseline, yeah, definitely go and check it out. See if it works. Um, this, this tool has only been uh, released probably about two, three months back now. Um, it was too new and a lot of it was all grayed out. So I wasn't aware that that was, um, that was available now. So well done. Thank and you. Darren, the click funnel is very specific, has a very specific area for digital products, which is what we have. Mm. So I found it to be really awesome. Yeah. Have you played around with any of the tools? Like, uh, what do we got? Image compressor um, as well. And some other things inside of that. No, but the, I saw those when I was looking up the legal and I'm excited. <laughs> Business loan calculator. There's a ton of stuff in there. So def definitely check it out. Slogan maker. There we go. Uh, launching perfectly. <laughs> you can use it. You can use it. Check it out. Um, Anyway, okay. Uh, as long as they have, for example, earnings disclosure and etc., because that's also a thing. Uh, what else? Yeah, like uh, Blake has earning uh, earnings disclosure. Um, that's important. I'm just like still thinking. The Squeak Funnels. Do you know have the option to create that pop up that uh, you have to have in EU about cookies? Um, you know the thing that you enter the page and uh, it just pops up as like, oh, this is uh, some for page, the cookies. Some pages allow so inside of ClickFunnels it doesn't pop up. Um, you Blake has it inside of his terms and conditions, so you'll see it inside of the EU, all the legislation, everything like that with the GDPR inside of there. It's not a pop up. ClickFunnels haven't changed. Uh, with just that. you know that annoying uh, little window, uh, annoying little thing that uh, you should have theoretically in the EU on your website, which is just like, oh, we are going to use your cookies. Are you okay with that? Or option change the settings. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, there's no, there's no like specific CSS code or any change that has happened inside of ClickFunnels, even though uh, it's a very good subject to, to mention about that. But no, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's in your terms and conditions inside of your footer, then you should be fine. So uh, Blake hasn't changed anything with that. Um, we haven't got that pop-up as a accept or not or decline, as you most likely get that pop-up on every website these days. It's ridiculous. 
you go onto a website these days and before you can even see the information you see it and then suddenly there's a big pop up um yeah no great great point no just leave just leave it inside of your footer if anything changes it should happen from the top from click funnels and everybody else should change as well i know inside of other other funnel builders they do already have that implemented with the gdpr and uh, anything else that they do have to check on and uh, things that will pop up at the bottom but click funnels does not have this feature right now I know some people go and get these things, the code for that, but I, uh, even if I kind of understand the code, still so wouldn't like to mess anything up. It's like, uh -uh. especially when I'm with what you get is what you see generators, which sometimes you get like bulky, bulky codes from that. So especially such codes. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't if Blake them. hasn't done it, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't like I wouldn't to interfere. It. Yeah, I wouldn't interfere with the framework, anything. Just like, I can kind of know what can go wrong. Like, yeah, don't worry about any of that kind of stuff. If it's not inside of the training, then don't worry about it. Because when Blake is meeting with the team, with the with the um, with the lawyers and everything, compliance, that's when we need to change. And he'll tell us of all those changes inside of the program. So he'll give us those updates as and when we need to. As well as ClickFunnels will be emailing you to. Um, so don't worry about any of those sort of things until you know once they move. It's one. It's their pro it's their platform, so that it should be available as a check check mark. Um, for those people in the in certain countries to display this, I don't know if in America do you um, do you have this pop up whenever you go on to anyone, uh, Mark, Evie, Carlos, do you have this pop up that shows up on your side? Uh, yes, you're talking about the cookies. Uh, yeah, the cookies, GDPR, all that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, yes. remember, remember, like the UK was heavy on it, and they still are. Um, and there's like this ADA compliance as well. Uh, if you heard, that's more of a, a, a US thing, but it, everyone's starting to get catch wind of that. But it's not something that we really need to worry about right here, right now. Um, once once the compliance team, you know, if there's anything that we need to tell you all here inside of the program, then we'll let you know, but don't worry about it right now. You want to be focusing on your build. You want to be focusing on your income generating assets. Not, nothing that's trying to make it all pretty and making sure it's all like, you know, launching everything in perfectly is what you want to be doing. If someone's going to buy like a $7 product product, here's something that I've, uh, that I've learned this week as well. This is my second dispute with a transaction. Uh, I'm going to show you my screen of what you should go into inside of. Stripe. I saw you recommending that I went in there, but I kept getting, getting an error message when I tried. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. For me, it said it wasn't, it wasn't part of my plan. Oh, okay. Um, so all I did was, um, if I just, I mean, I give you the link inside of the messenger anyway, but for those, um, it's once you're actually inside of your, your, uh, Stripe account, you're looking for the lowest option on the bottom right hand side. My, my video is covering it right now, but this right here, chargeback protection, if they're going to charge me a little, a small piece for what happens here is that if someone makes a complaint or for any reason, just because they're throwing their dummy out the pram, um, <laughs> is some of the things that I've seen that people that people want to refund. Oh, I didn't get my products. But I've seen in the tracking inside of inside of the activity in inside of ClickFunnels that you have got to the order confirmation page, but you never got past there. Or you got to the order confirmation page and you got to um, the secret sign-up URL, but you didn't get inside of the members area. Well, the reason why you didn't get your products is because you didn't sign in. So they got a refund. So the money was extracted from my from my Stripe account. So having that turned on would allow the money to stay there and for me to handle this dispute and the reason why. But because it's not turned on, the money will go straight away. So for this last dispute, I, I couldn't be bothered to even like argue with that, except move on. It was only like $54. It cost me 16 pounds to handle that dispute. But it's not a decision that uh, Stripe take. It's, uh, it's something within with the bank. So that customer didn't contact me in Messenger. What can I do? I'm there. I was speaking to you first. If you're not, if you're not wanting to communicate afterwards, then at least reach out. I'm here in Messenger. That's where I found you. So find me and send me a message or send me an email because you have all the support. You can even go to the page. You can go to the footer. You can, there's so many different ways. Uh, even in, when they get to the order confirmation page, top right hand side, there's uh, any questions or bottom left hand side of the footer need help. Um, and also in the email that they receive. So I could clearly see that that person got to the secret sign up URL to create a registration for the members area, but they didn't. So I actually had a look inside of ClickFunnels and, and found that they that didn't, didn't even create a members area. So 
That was so a strange one. Whole thing. I missed it. Did you go through the steps? Uh, I didn't go through this. St- I was just talking about it. Okay. Um, I was just saying like, what kind of situations you could come come through because this is new for me as well. Um, so anything that I'm noting with regards to customers disputes and everything like that, I'm outlining that and creating an SOP for, to go forwards. And if that becomes part of the training, it's not part of the training just yet. Um, and maybe any, and, and any can responses, it was highlighted on, I think it was call number five or six with Blake, um, where, where maybe, maybe he, he'd passed down some of the, uh, canned responses that, if you're dealing with refunds or something like that, maybe you were going to give 50% back instead of hundred percent back or whatever it would be. I don't know. Um, but there are certain things that as an individual, as a business owner, you would want to operate in a certain way. And so you'd only know that inside of your business, if you're going to give away, give back hundred percent or would there be 50% and after 14 days before 14 days. So that needs to be spoken about and handled because uh, if they're doing it at the higher level over at the Lexpander program, social media machine, we'll also need to know it too. And they were like, yeah, exactly. We need to, we need to get this training in. Um, and that hasn't been in there. And so only because I'm going through this process and handling all these customers um, and the, the majority of them, then, you know, I've had two disputes already. First one, I can't remember what it was for. Oh yeah, I do know. It was a VA that purchased for the client with his name on her card. Oh, two, wow. separate tra- two separate transactions, two separate dates, two separate credit cards, same name, two separate de- two days apart. Um, and even though I put in the details, it was only afterwards, once I spoken to the customer, the customer's fine. I'm, he's, paid, he's, he's purchased through the whole thing. Um, and he's got his son, his 17-year-old son going through the, the lead machine. Um, the, the, the VA cut ties with him she was saying that she's found things about me, negative stuff about me. And all I do is help out all, all day. So try and find some negative things about me. Maybe it's the way that I've spoken to someone. I don't care. Like I'm being real. I'm trying to help as many, many people as possible. Um, but I don't think there's, I, I asked him, ask your VA, send me all the links of where everything has been said. All these negative things have been said about me. She says, Oh, that's it. You want to, tr- you want to trust him over me? She didn't have anything. So I lost the dispute. Um, I didn't have any evidence. I spoke to the customer afterwards and, uh, he said it was, it was because that she'd, she'd made that purchase and her, her name for me should have lost it. It was in the wrong name. Um, and even so I would have happily given a refund anyway, without the dispute, she just didn't reach back out to me because of probably the argument that she had with the, with the customer, um, her client either way. One of the strange things you shouldn't normally come see that but at least i'm sharing it with you um again one of those things i don't really care care too much about and nothing to really think about just to share and just move on and um you'll get customers that will want to refund just because they've they wanted to steal something as well they go through the whole program and they do it within the 14 days and they launch whatever they whatever it is and then suddenly it won't you'll see a chargeback and think huh why if you have that feature inside of stripe if you go did I even paste that link? There we go. I'm going to tell you, Darren, this whole Stripe thing, like I don't even know if I did this correctly. It's, oh. a, again, a lot of legal jargon and a lot of yeah. Stuff. Yeah, don't don't worry about all these things. If it if it if it, if it feels like jargon and and you know, I I'm a bit further along with this whole program than everyone here, but if uh, there's any questions that you do have, we've always always got your priority support how to handle certain things as well. And you've also got your group as well. There's plenty of other people that have launched their funnel. So don't worry about that. Sorry if it's, if it feels like jargon and um, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you with what my experiences are with, with this program and going forwards with that. But anyway, I've gone uh, probably about 17 minutes past, uh, past the hour that I said anyway, but um, does anybody else have any other questions aside from that? I think uh, I've covered everybody else's question today. Um, All good. Okay. 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 All right. 12 people left in the room. Appreciate you for jumping on. Uh, I shall see you all next week, Tuesday, 4 p.m. EST. Have a great weekend, everyone. All right. Thank you. No worries. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, everybody.